Okay, let's go get our drinks all ordered at the bar. I mean, frankly, the coffee menus at most cafes can be pretty daunting. You have a lot of choices here. You also have a, a tea menu usually, which is, which is a whole nother can of worms. And there's a lot of words on here. There's a lot of words that don't inherently make sense. So I thought we would talk about them today. Good news is I work here, so we can just go behind the bar. So let's get our apron on. Be kind to the apron. Apron will be kind to you. And don't worry, I got one for you too. Welcome behind the bar. At this point, you're basically a barista. But what we're gonna be talking about today is milk plus espresso. Now, this is a category that spans many, many different drinks. And sometimes in cafe menus, it isn't even broken up into the drinks. Sometimes in more modern cafes, you'll just see the very monolithic milk plus espresso on the menu board. And while stylistically, I think this looks kind of cool, it's very confusing because there are so many different drink types and sizes and all sorts of things that fall into that. So let's break them down today. So to start off today, we're gonna talk about our two ingredients and it's in the name, it's milk plus espresso. And in here we got ingredient one, milk. Now this right here is dairy milk. This is whole milk, so it has a much higher fat percentage than let's say 2% or skim milk. This stuff is really, really nice and it's what I default to if I'm using a dairy milk. This stuff steams really nicely. It has a high sugar content, which means when you pair it with coffee, it balances out that acidity, that bitterness that's inherently in coffee, and you end up with something that's really creamy, really sweet, and it's just, it's tasty. It's delicious. However, if you are someone that likes skim or 2% or any of the whole range of scary amount of alternative milks, frankly, everything we're gonna talk about today applies the exact same. Milk preference, totally up to you. However, today we're gonna go with whole milk. Okay, but moving over here, we have ingredient two, which is gonna be clearly our espresso. We have our espresso machine along with some grinders full of delicious coffee. Now, espresso in and of itself can be an entire video, and it will be, but today we're just gonna talk about it very, very briefly, just so we're all on the same page about what it is. Now, sometimes in some videos I get when I'm pouring a latte, people will say, that's not a lot of coffee. That is mostly milk what you're drinking. Here's the thing with espresso. It is incredibly concentrated in the form of coffee that it is. It is a small drink, yes, usually it's a about two ounces for a double shot, but it is brewed under extreme pressure. It is very, very highly concentrated and it's very delicious. So having two ounces is just about right. I would say drinking more than two ounces of espresso and starting to get pretty caffeinated. So today with our espresso, we're gonna be working with two ounces for all of our drinks across the board. This with the coffee I'm using is gonna be approximately 37 to 38 grams. So we're only using two ingredients in all the drinks we're gonna talk about today. And for the most part, a lot of coffee drinks only have two ingredients. It's milk and espresso. So how can there be that many different drinks? We have macchiatos, we have cortados, gibraltars, cappuccinos, flat whites, lattes, all sorts of things. And they're only milk plus espresso. Well, it has to do with the size they're served in and the ratio. Frequently, when we talk about coffee drinks, we are specifically talking about the amount of ounces in that drink or the ratio in that drink. Starting off from a latte, which is probably going to be your largest drink, all the way down to a macchiato, which is very much going to be your smallest drink. I'll have you come back around the Bar, we're gonna start off the big boy. We're gonna start with the latte. Now, as a little fun fact slash side note here when we're talking about lattes, I think it's kind of important to mention that if you order a latte outside of, let's say, North America, you aren't always guaranteed to get a coffee drink because latte traditionally means milk. It doesn't have anything to do with coffee. In fact, if you're wanting to order what we call a latte, that is espresso plus milk, you'll be wanting to order a cafe latte. However, where I'm at, a latte means coffee plus milk. So it's a little bit confusing, but just something to be aware of because sometimes you might get a steamer <laughs> if you just simply order a latte. Okay, moving on. Now lattes for sure have the most variability in size with them. Right here, we have a little eight ounce cup and eight ounces is generally agreed upon where lattes start. Anything smaller than eight ounces of milk and espresso usually has a different name, but starting at eight ounces, we have lattes. That being said, they can go up to 12 ounces, they can go up to 16 ounces, they can go up to 20 or 24 or 28 or 32. They can go up to whatever size you really want them to be. Of course, at some point you just have a bucket of milk and espresso, but that being said, there isn't really like a cap to the latte size. However, they do start at eight ounces. So that's what we're gonna make today. Okay, so we've got our little pitcher of milk. Let's get some espresso. Now, while our espresso is pulling, it's time to start steaming our milk. 
Now, lattes for the most part are not known for being super foamy. These are mostly gonna be hot milk, but because we work on a really nice machine, we're able to get all that nice foam on top really nicely integrated because when you have really smooth, creamy milk, it's kind of a fun trick that your barista probably can do for you. And that is trademark latte art. Now, pay no attention to me switching pictures. This is just something that I like to do for myself as a treat. <laughs> Now, we have our latte right here. First thing we're gonna do is integrate our milk into the base of our espresso, and it's time to pour. That right there, too simple. Oh. Almost spilled it there. That right there is a latte. Now we have our latte right here, and I mentioned that this isn't a super foamy drink. And if you would like to test the amount of foam that is in your latte, you grab a little spoon like this. So I know this is gonna ruin the art, we'll get through it. To test your foam, you're gonna use the back of your spoon and just kind of brush it through the latte, brush it over the top. Brush it right through, there you go. You can see you have this lovely kind of medium thin amount of foam on top and underneath you have really nicely integrated warm milk, warm creamy milk and espresso. Easy enough. Even without the latte art, it's pretty delicious. But let's say you like foamier coffee. Well, we can make that happen. So we're moving down a size and that leaves us with this little cup right here. And this is the grandfather of espresso drinks. This is the this is the shining star. This is the cappuccino. <laughs> Cappuccinos are kind of interesting. And like with honestly most coffee drinks, there's a lot of variability into what their actual definitions are because they tend to be very regional. What I know as a cappuccino where I live might not be what you know as a cappuccino, but in general, there are kind of a couple rules of thumb that are true no matter where you go. The first thing is kind of the traditional definition of cappuccino. And this is kind of where we get into ratios because the cappuccino is kind of a game of thirds, if you will. Generally, you think of the cappuccino in three different parts. You have your first third, which is gonna be espresso. So this is a six ounce cup. You have two ounces of espresso in the bottom. Next, we have one third of warm steamed milk. So two more ounces of steamed milk. And then we have the top layer, <laughs> which is where it gets a little sticky sometimes. The top layer is generally known to be one third of foam. That is gonna be really, really stiffly steamed milk that is mostly just air. So you have that really stiff layer that you sip through to get to your warm milk and espresso and all that goodness underneath. Now, let's say you really like foam. You want your drink perhaps to be mostly foam. In that case, you might order a dry cappuccino. A dry cappuccino being less kind of liquidy milk and being more airy foam. Or let's say you're like me and you don't necessarily love a ton of foam. In that case, you might order what's called a wet cappuccino. If you want to be ultra safe with your order, then you might wanna use those two descriptors because otherwise you don't really know what you're gonna get. Maybe you'll get a dry one or maybe you'll get a more modern wet cappuccino. However, for the sake of making this drink today and making as few people angry as possible, we're gonna be using that rule of thirds. So let's get some milk, let's get some espresso, let's make a cappuccino. Now, when pouring my milk, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna wanna have more foam than I did on my latte. So I'm not gonna add quite as much milk because we're gonna be adding more air, meaning that this milk is gonna expand higher in the pitcher. So to be clear on your cappuccinos, less milk, more air, but your pitcher is gonna fill up with the same amount of like liquid at the end, if any of that makes any sense at all. <laughs> so let's start steaming. Like we did before, I'm gonna start aerating the milk, but we're gonna add more air than we did before. There we go, got our milk here, and in fact, you can even see some of that stiffer foam sitting on top. Like we did before, I like pitcher transferring. It's kind of fun. And now, it's time to pour. Now this has been sitting here for a second and you're starting to see some bubbles come to the top, as well as the fact that we don't necessarily have that silky smooth like latte art on top that we did with the previous drink we made. This is because there is a lot more air in this milk than there was in the latte. However, that being said, a skilled barista will probably still be able to make some sort of shape in your drink. Just because there's latte art on top of your cappuccino does not mean it's not still a cappuccino. However, we have a spoon here. Let's do the spoon test again to actually see the amount of foam we have on here because if this was a clear glass, in theory, we should have foam to about right there. We should have nice warm milk and espresso for the last two thirds. Let's push through. As you can see here, we have a much, 
much thicker, much stiffer layer of foam going on here. It's kind of pillowy, honestly, in texture. In some places, this might be served with a sprinkle of cocoa powder on top. In some places, it wouldn't. But either way, it's gonna be a very tasty drink. You get a sip through this wonderful pillowy foam on top to get to all that like lovely mixed up milk and espresso underneath. And the ratio is really nice because while you still get the really creamy, like wonderful sweet qualities of the milk, it's a tight enough ratio that you can still really taste the espresso coming through. It's wonderful. It's one of my favorites. And, and if you really think about it, the cappuccino is kind of the original layered drink. Anyways, let's say you want to go a little bit smaller than the cappuccino. We can do that. Now, if you thought the last couple of drinks were complicated, I'm about to blow your mind because it gets even worse <laughs> coming up. And it has to do with the drink that is a one to one ratio of espresso to milk. With the cappuccino, remember it was a one part coffee to one part milk to one part foam. But let's say, let's say we're tightening it up even more. We're getting even smaller in ounces. Let's say we're going for one part coffee to one part milk. That brings you to these two glasses right here. These two glasses, believe it or not, are the same size, but they're a different type of glass, so they look a little bit different. This right here, if you have a drink served in it, is called a Gibraltar. This right here is a Cortado. What's the difference? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> now, the interesting thing about a Gibraltar is it's not actually speaking to, to what's in the glass. It's speaking to the type of glass that it's being served in. This is a Gibraltar glass. It is four to four and a half ounces, which lends itself to being a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's say two ounces of espresso to approximately two ounces of milk. However, when it's not served in that glass, it's called a Cortado. This is also a four to four and a half ounce glass. Again, two ounces of espresso to approximately two ounces of milk. Cortado, however, means to cut. And that's the idea of you have your espresso and you are cutting it with milk. Either one of these is entirely fine. They are the same drink. I do not care what you call it. They are both delicious. Let's make one. Now, commonly the milk in these drinks is not gonna be super foamy. So if you wanna go for that texture, kind of similar to a latte, but you just want a smaller drink, I would absolutely go for a Cortado or a Gibraltar because it's gonna be a nice, smooth, creamy, but not too fluffy milk paired with your espresso. Doesn't really matter which cup you use. I like pouring into this one, so we're gonna use the more classical Gibraltar glass. And once more, simply enough, we pour. With these glasses, you actually have the benefit of being able to see through them. You can see down here, we have mixed in all of our lovely milk and espresso. But starting right here, you can see that line of foam. It's not super thick, but it's definitely there. Meaning you get that nice, rich, fluffy creaminess at the top before getting down to kind of the, the bread and butter of your drink, if you will. Again, whether you call this a Cortado or a Gibraltar, doesn't really matter. It's a one-to-one -one ratio of espresso to milk and it's delicious. Again, because it's a tighter ratio, you have less of that kind of like fattiness from the milk, kind of dulling or kind of like twisting the flavors of the espresso. So you really get that bright acidity cutting through it all. You really get a very espresso forward drink. But let's say, let's say you want to go even smaller. We can do that. <laughs> now this drink is going to be our last one for today. This is a very small drink, a tiny drink. It's minuscule, but as with the others, it's very tasty and it is the macchiato. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, Morgan, you're holding a latte cup for ants. And while I'd say yes, <laughs> I'm also holding what is generally used for serving espressos on their own as a double espresso or perhaps a macchiato. This right here is little three ounce cup. Two ounces of espresso is gonna fill it almost to the top. But let's say you wanna you wanna cut your espresso a little bit. Let's say you wanna you wanna mark your espresso a little bit. In that case, you can put some milk in here and make it a macchiato. Now, again, similar to cappuccinos, there is kind of a a traditional way of making a macchiato, then there's also kind of the more the more modern way of making the macchiato. The traditional way is using a dollop of milk foam. So again, really, really fluffy, just like airy milk that's kind of set on top of your espresso that you can mix in and then drink. However, if you order a macchiato nowadays, it can sometimes be a toss up of whether you're gonna get, you know, that really, really dry milk or you get more of like a wet milk. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> but what I mean is whether you're gonna get more kind of like latte textured milk versus cappuccino textured milk. I feel like that's, that's the best way to think of these two things. However, let's be a little traditional. Let's make a very classic macchiato. 
More milk. My stomach's gonna hate me after today. Goody. Now, if we wanna go back to thinking in terms of ratios, we can think of this as a two to one ratio. Instead of being, you know, more heavy in the milk realm or even a one to one ratio, we now have two parts espresso, two ounces of espresso to one ounce approximately of milk. Now, because this is a drink that is far more reliant on espresso than it is any sort of additives or milk, this is where you really want to take care that using really nice espresso, or you're going to like a nice coffee shop when you're ordering a drink like this, because if you have a bad tasting espresso in your drink, there's, there's not really anything to mask it. You get a little bit of milk foam, but <laughs> hardly going to break through those really strong, just like punchy flavors of an espresso. So just something to keep in mind when ordering it. Espresso's pretty. Again, we're going for a thicker, foamier, more cappuccino-like milk here. Now, we've got our tiny baby cup right here. As you can see, the espresso is, is nearly to the top there. And now, since we're going the more traditional route for this, I give you permission to use a spoon. A clean spoon, that is, not a dirty one. We're just gonna scoop off some of that foam, place it right on top, for macchiato. Again, we are marking the top of our espresso with some nice, nice milk foam. This is one of the nicest traditional macchiatos I think I've ever made. <laughs> Beat that circle. Now, this, this is a punchy drink. You can mix up your milk into espresso. You can have it all as kind of like one thing and just shoot it. Or you can, again, like you do with the cappuccino sometimes, you can sip through the foam and get the two things as like different flavors and that's totally acceptable as well. Honestly, it's however you like to drink it. There are some rules to coffee, but the order in which you drink your milk versus your espresso, I don't think should ever be one of them. Do whatever you like. Personally, myself, I mix these two together. The macchiato is nice. It's a fun little drink that is quick and easy and still very tasty. This is also a sidebar that in no way today have we talked about the Starbucks macchiato. That is a very different thing for a very different video. So don't worry, I will come back to that. <laughs> this was a fun time today. And I think at the end of this, we all have a pretty good understanding of what our milk plus espresso category is. Again, there are not a ton of rules in coffee, in my opinion, but there are some definitions that are helpful to know when navigating a cafe or navigating making drinks for yourself and finding what you like. Hopefully, this was a good first step for both of those things. Now, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere I'm active on. You can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus some extra for short, or you can find me on TikTok and Instagram almost every single day. Beyond that, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. <laughs> now that we know what we can order, what are you getting?